shelter. There's no blue pole logo. There's no pictures of people. It's like a rose or something. Yeah. Okay, so I think I actually managed to say all this stuff in my opening introduction. Um, yeah, I'm involved uh, pretty heavily in the open source uh, part of Drupal, the open source aspect of Drupal. I maintain 20 or so uh, modules on Drupal.org. Um, and as some of you, I guess, were learning, I'm also interested in language learning. I have a whole bunch of videos on YouTube uh, for learners of English and uh, learners of Polish. So, uh, with Drupal, you can build pretty much anything. Um, I'm not you know, aware of a type of website you couldn't build with Drupal. But what does Drupal look like out of the box? Who here has installed Drupal? Sweet. So for those who haven't, this is Drupal out of the box. You get this nice blue screen. You know, it acts kind of as a very simple blog with not a very good content editing experience. Except, you know, nobody really wants this thing. When someone's thinking to themselves and dreaming, ooh, I really want a website, this isn't what they're dreaming about. You know, this doesn't match any requirements document you're ever going to get from a client. Uh, it's a blank slate. It does nothing. What people actually want is something that feels like a website. Uh, this screenshot is from a Drupal distribution called Open Public. It's uh, designed for local government websites. And when you install it, you get a website for local governments uh, full of uh, demo data. You know, this thing, you could never take that live in a million years. You know, you're going to have to download dozens of modules and install them and configure them. And that's that's the power of Drupal, right? There's like 24,000 Drupal modules. You know, there's a module to do pretty much everything, but you have to do that work to get it there. With something like Open Public, you know, you could go change the demo data, change it from like my imaginary city government to your real city name, and you could take that live. Uh, people want the core functionality that they need. Um, this is uh, Commerce Kickstart. Uh, when you install it, you get a fully functional e-commerce store. It's built on Drupal Commerce, which is this fleet of modules that's infinitely flexible and can do all these things. But to do that, you know, you have to first learn all of those modules and how to do all of those things. You know, do you want to spend your time figuring out how to create a shopping cart, how to uh, implement payment, or do you want to just start throwing products online? So really, the bottom line is, People want something closer to what they're actually trying to accomplish out of the box. And once they have uh, configured something, you know, if you're in a big organization or you're working at a Drupal agency, you want to take that thing you built and do it a whole bunch of times. Maybe you have a fleet of websites or, you know, uh, if you're at a Drupal agency uh, or a freelance uh, developer, you're not building completely unique, original websites every time. You probably operate in some kind of niche. You do some of the same things every time. Wouldn't it be great if Drupal just was that way out of the box? So this is where Drupal distributions come in. Uh, a Drupal distribution is Drupal prepackaged with a bunch of contrib modules, themes, and configured to actually be something, to not be a blank slate, but to have a purpose. Uh, you install it just like Drupal, but, you know, out of the box it does something. And it still is Drupal. So even if you uh, install this Drupal distribution, it does X, but you really needed to do X plus Y, you could still dig into that pool of Drupal modules and reconfigure it and make it do whatever you needed to do. Uh, here are some popular Drupal distributions. We already talked about Commerce Kickstart, Open Public, uh, Open Atrium. Uh, is for building a company intranet portal to collaborate on tasks, uh, share a knowledge base. Uh, Drupal Commons, it's for building online communities if you want to have your own Facebook. Uh, Open Academy for building university department websites. Julio for school and high school websites. I know Adam, you said you work for a school and have a Drupal site. Maybe check it out, see if yeah, that definitely. might uh, fit your needs. Uh, the demo framework, um, so uh, who here knows the company Acquia? Yeah, they're probably the biggest uh, Drupal development agency in the world right now. They do multi-million dollar projects. When they go to a client to try and sell them on the idea of Drupal, they don't install Drupal 7 out of the box and show them that. 
they have a special distribution, uh, the demo framework, which they actually show them. Erpl, so if you're a Drupal agency, uh, this is a Drupal distribution to do internal project management and customer uh, relationship management, so you could manage your entire business on a Drupal site. Uh, and Panoply, which is going to be the main topic of the presentation today. So there's also lots of internal distributions. Before we're talking about you know, public ones you can download, but lots of big organizations, uh, for a number of reasons, create their own internal distributions for their own uses. Here's a couple of organizations that we know about, but there's probably dozens or hundreds of others that we don't know about. And there's a lot of reasons to use an internal distribution. Um, if you're building lots of sites, if you're a freelancer or Drupal agency building Drupal sites every day, you know, why redo all the same work every time? Um, if you have a lot of sites, you know, build it, configure it once, deploy it a whole bunch of times. And, you know, another approach to, uh, you know, you build a site and you want to have another site with similar features would be just to copy the site, just clone it. Uh, the disadvantage with that is, you know, you have this common functionality, now you've cloned it, you want to change that common functionality, you don't have to change it in two places. So, you know, that's not that bad with two websites, but, you know, make that 10 or 100. Every time you want to change something, you're now in a whole bunch of places. So, uh, with a distribution, you can actually make changes to the distribution itself and then deploy those changes across all your sites. So, what is Panoply? Uh, Panoply is actually three things, which makes it a little difficult to talk about and certainly more difficult to develop. Uh, one of those things is it is a Drupal distribution itself, uh, a starter distribution. When you install it, you get a blank slate, just like when you install normal Drupal, but it's a more friendly blank slate, a more featureful blank slate. It's got a whole bunch of obvious stuff that probably everyone wants, uh, like WYSIWYG and media, responsive layouts, uh, and some panel stuff, which we'll be talking about later. Um, so you could use this instead of stock Drupal to be a blank slate, if you want it. The other thing, uh, and maybe the more innovative thing, is that it is a base distribution. It's a distribution that you can build your own distribution out of. Um, so it takes some of that work uh, away, so you can uh, get started on making the unique functionality of your distribution rather than reinventing the wheel on low-level stuff. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit at the end. And it's also a set of feature modules that can be used on normal sites outside of Panoply. Who's familiar with the features module? Only a couple of people. So uh, the features module is, um, it allows you to take configuration work that you've done in Drupal, like clicking through the interface and building pages and creating forms and all that stuff, and export it into a custom module. So then you can take that custom module, enable it on another site, and then all the configuration stuff you made is there. So it's just a way of uh, packaging up configuration to be reused in other places. So Panoply has all of its different uh, features, its different sort of units of functionality in a separate features module that you can take and use outside of Panoply. The most um, common one is Panoply WYSIWYG. So if you like the WYSIWYG stuff Panoply does, and you want to enable it on your vanilla Drupal site, you can just grab that particular module and enable it. So I threw this slide in kind of at the last minute um, because there's a lot of really strong feelings about panels. Like people either really, really love it or really, really hate it. And so I wanted to kind of address that a little bit in the beginning. Uh, but first, I guess, who here has used panels? Who here loves panels? Who here hates panels? Oh, sweet, I have the easiest audience ever. <laughs> um, so, you know, I used to not really like panels. Because uh, it's another pointy, clicky thing, and I'm a developer. So obviously, I prefer to write code <laughs> than go through the pointy, clicky thing. And it's also really complicated and kind of confusing. So a lot of users don't like it because they just don't know what all that stuff is. Uh, who here has used uh, views but not panels? So one, one guy. Yeah, so views is complicated. Panels is like 10 times more complicated. Uh, <laughs> But uh, it, it really allows you to do some amazing things. Um, you know, Panoply kind of won me over to the panels world uh, because the features of panels that we use in Panoply are not for me. <laughs> They're not for the developer. They're for your end user. 
to be able to customize the site in a really easy to understand way for them. Uh, and hopefully I'll convince you of that when we get to the demo phase. Uh, also, panels includes not, or panels, Panoply includes not just panels, but the best of the panels ecosystem. So like a dozen other modules that build on it and then hides all of the nastiness away. Uh, the most complicated, nastiest part of panels is the page manager. And the golden rule in Panoply is that users will never see the page manager. Uh, they use an entirely different uh, interface instead called the IPE, which allows them to manipulate the layout and arrangement of their pages while being on that page. They don't go to some weird, confusing backend. They manipulate it in real time, WYSIWYG style. And I thought I had another point, but all right. Let's get down to the features of Panoply. Uh, so first of all, you know, Panoply enables a ton of modules that you probably already use. Um, you know, looking at this list, uh, you're probably using a ton of these on your sites already. Views, PathAuto, WYSIWYG, CTools, jQuery update, and uh, maybe a couple you haven't heard of, but they're all good stuff. You know, these make really obvious improvements to the way Drupal works, um, and there's no reason that everyone should be using them. And then also there's a whole bunch of um, panel stuff in the middle that you might not recognize. Panelizer, fake, feelable panel panes. But also, uh, you know, we don't just install these modules, but uh, Panoply takes care of updating them. So when an update comes out, you don't have to run, you know, get that module, just update to the next version of Panoply. Uh, takes care of security updates. If there's any patches or changes required to any of the modules that, um, you know, that are needed for them to work together or fix bugs, we take care of all of that. So if you build your site on Panoply, you'll never have to worry about updating any of this junk ever again. All websites have layouts, usually several layouts, and uh, the traditional way that a layout is provided in Drupal is from the theme. But there's probably like a hundred ways to do layouts in Drupal, you know, varying levels of flexibility and complicatedness. Uh, but Panoply through panels provides all of these layouts, um, and they're all responsive, they're all cross-browser tested. If you chose to use these layouts and panels, of course you don't have to, it's your website, you know, you immediately can use any of these layouts on any of your pages without having to theme or write any CSS or HTML or anything. And through the panel's IP, your users can say, hey, uh, my front page is using this layout, I'd like to switch it to this one, or you know, move different parts around in it, and they can do that freely. Search. Uh, so the built-in Drupal search was designed to run on as many platforms as possible, including like $5 a month shared hosting. Uh, so it's designed to, to run everywhere and not necessarily be very fast or very featureful. Uh, there's a whole bunch of modules in Drupal to improve the search, extend the search. Uh, Panoply will override uh, the built-in search functionality with a suite of modules called Search API. Uh, by default, you know, working off the database, but if you want to really uh, step it up. Uh, it already includes the configuration to use Apache Solar for your search, which is a real search engine. And uh, like everything else in Panoply, this is provided as a separate uh, feature module. So if for whatever reason on your site you didn't want all of the search improvements from Panoply, uh, just turn them off. Just turn off the Panoply search module. Or if you're building your own distribution, just don't include that module. WYSIWYG. Um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, arguments about whether WYSIWYG is a good idea or not. Uh, but you know what? Clients love it. Clients expect it. And uh, Drupal 8's going to have WYSIWYG in core. Uh, in Drupal 7, setting up uh, WYSIWYG, just like installing it and having it appear, is pretty easy, right? <laughs> Listen, Justin doesn't agree. It's easy. It's just easy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, just, just turning it on isn't that big of a deal. But like, there's a whole bunch of really serious problems you end up finding in practice. Uh, the first one is, you know, deciding what of these buttons you're going to give to your clients. Uh, there's a ton of options, and some of them are a really bad idea. For example, like font. If you give them the ability to change the font, everything's going to be in Comic Sans, and all the time you spent like theming the site and you know picking the right fonts and everything is going to just be totally lost because they'll destroy it. If you give them the ability to change font size, same thing. They'll like make things like size 52 here and size 50 there, no consistency. Um, and it's not semantic, right? You want them to use heading tags, not 
Anyway, so there's a whole lot of work that needs to go into deciding what do you give them, right? And then beyond that, just giving them the button doesn't mean that they can't still put the thing in there. If you copy and paste something from Word, it'll put it in there, whether the button's available or not. Um, so you also have to set up some really complex filtering to remove the things that you don't want them to do. And beyond you know, just filtering for control, you also have to filter out things for security. Uh, you know, there's plenty of HTML tags that attackers could put in there to, you know, monitor your users or steal their personal data and stuff like that. So you have to filter that out. So beyond those two challenges, there's a whole bunch of things that WYSIWYG doesn't necessarily do by default that, you know, your users probably want, like image captions. There is no HTML tag for an image caption, but like if you have images, you need captions, right? So, you know, there's an add-on for WYSIWYG to make that happen. Uh, inserting images, resizing images, uh, those are all extra add-ons you have to install and configure. Um, clients have trouble with links, <laughs> you know, just going to the URL uh, bar, copying something, putting it in there. Uh, so there's a Drupal module link, which allows them to uh, click, you know, the little link guy, and they get a thing that lets them type in keywords to search for other content on the site. So they don't even need to go find it and figure out what a URL is, it just works. So, you know, at the end of the day, even though it's simple to turn on, like to get it right, WYSIWYG is really hard. So why redo that yourself? Certainly not on every site. Panoply has put a lot of time into this, so why not use it? Uh, content authoring. So it puts the uh, content editing page into this two column layout. Who has seen the like standard Drupal like node ad page? Okay, so a couple of people. Anyway, this is cleaner. Uh, <laughs> in, in two columns, the way it's going to be in Drupal 8, uh, removes a whole bunch of complicated options that make no sense and kind of reduces it down to the bare minimum that you need. Uh, we also try to adjust the relative size and position of things for importance, like the title is really big and up at the top, like a title should be, right? But uh, you know, the URL where that page is going to live also very important, so it's at the top, but it's made really tiny so it doesn't distract you. And a whole bunch of thought was put into, you know, taking away the Drupalisms and just giving people what they need. Oh, and uh, this page is a panel, so if you wanted to change the way that the content editing experience worked on your particular site or your distribution, you could just go into panels and move things around. Put another column on there, you know, put the image at the bottom, whatever you want. Landing pages. So Drupal's really great at content. Like if you come up with a content type and want to create a whole bunch of it, Drupal's got you. You know, like you could make a content type for presentation, it's got a title, it's got a description, it's got a time, it's got link to the slides, you know, all that stuff, and then you could create 100 presentations on your website and display them and mash it up or whatever. Drupal doesn't do very good at uh, unique one-off pages that aren't content-based. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of solutions to that. Panels is one of them. The context module is one of them. Um, you know, just using blocks or theming or whatever. Uh, but there isn't like a really great solution in uh, Drupal core. And even panels, to make a landing page, like a front page, you have to use the page manager, which is evil. <laughs> so Panoply uh, creates a sort of fake content type called landing page. Uh, you go here, just put in the title of the page URL and then jump right into uh, editing the content on the page and the layout in the panel's IP. So you never touch the page manager. Uh, and I've been talking a whole bunch about the panel's IP. That's what this is. Uh, on most pages in Panoply, uh, you'll get some buttons down at the bottom. One says customize this page. The other one says uh, switch the layout or something like that. We'll see in the demo when we get there. Uh, but it puts the page into this mode where you can just grab these blocks and move them around or click uh, the little add button and get a list of things that you can add to that region. Uh, here are the default widgets that come with Panoply. Really obvious, simple stuff. Like I said, Panoply is a starter distribution. It's a blank slate. If you built your own distribution on top of it, you'd probably have some really special purpose stuff in here, right? Uh, like if you were building a distribution for musicians, in here you'd have like widgets for put my discography, put like a music player or something. But anyway, this is the default stuff that comes with Panoply. Uh, you can add links, add a file, add an image, add text. You know, there's like a hundred ways you could add an image to some random page in Drupal, and all of them are really complicated. 
right? <laughs> like uh, you're going to go to the blocks uh, configuration page in the back end and then you'll put something somewhere and then there's some like visibility rules and you have to say like, well, I just want it on this page in this region. And while you're doing all this, you don't get to see it. You know, this is all in the back end and you have no idea if it's working or not. Uh, but in Panoply with the IP, you know, you uh, click add image and it takes you to, uh, you know, a thing where you upload the image, see what the widget's going to look like live, and then see it appear on your actual page in real time. And here's um, the example of uh, the dialogue you get when you're configuring one of those widgets that appear on the page, either when you're creating it or later you can come and click like this little gear icon and get it. Uh, on the left, there's the settings for it, and then over here is a live preview. As you're changing these settings, the preview will update, and this is what it will actually look like when it gets dropped on your page. So one of the uh, cardinal UX you know, user experience things that Panoply is doing is uh, you know, show previews whenever possible, live previews if it's technically feasible, and WYSIWYG when we can, right? To show the user editing the thing, the place where the thing is going to live, in real time, not going to a backend. And if you're looking to build a distribution uh, based on Panoply, Panoply's got you. I mean, the features of it are cool, but um, where it's really exciting is in building uh, your own distribution. If you're a site builder, since everything in Panoply is like panels, views, entities, fields, you can go uh, extend it and change it all in the Drupal interface and then export that to a feature. Um, if you're a developer, even if you're writing something totally custom, like in custom code, you'd expose that to your users through uh, panels as a C tools plugin. So like even though this is all custom code, it'd still be like a block that later they can move around, they can click the little settings button, get a settings form that you created for them. So really the, the bottom line is like your distribution is going to do something really, really specific. It's going to have some really specific defaults. But Panoply provides this framework for your users to customize things later because they're going to want to. You know? <laughs> like, let's say you're making a distribution for musician websites. Like, you're going to have somewhere a discography page, right? So there's going to be a node type for album. They'll you know, upload the photo and put in the uh, date it was released and a description or whatever. And then a view somewhere that's going to show like, each of those albums. If, let's say, your user wanted to put like, uh, some text up at the top, you know, how are they going to do that? Like, well, they're going to have to go to the Drupal backend. First, first of all, they're going to have to know that that page is a view. Like, who knows that this page is a view, and this page is a panel, and that page is a node? Like, no user ever. But if they want to add some text at to the top, the first thing they're going to need to know is that that is a view. They're going to need to go into the Drupal backend, find the views UI. They're going to have to know how that works, and that they have to add some text up at the header, and you know, save it, and now this view has been changed. So if the distribution updates it later, like it's not going to update, and it, it's just a you know world of pain. And it gets even worse if what if they want to put up there is a video, you know, not some text, but they want to have like a YouTube video, of, you know, five second clips of their music videos or something. How are they going to accomplish that, you know? Whereas on Panoply, you create that view, that default thing that it does, and you let your users use the Panoply features to customize it further. If they, you know, well, here it has the sidebar on the right, we want the sidebar on the left, they can just go and do that. They don't need to call you. You know, it, it really delivers on this promise that Drupal and all CMSs have of once you hand it over to the client, they'll be able to administer it themselves, which kind of never really works out, right? Um, so this gives them more power without totally, like, letting them destroy everything. So, live demo time. Who's heard of uh, the website Simply Test Me? No, one person. I'm gonna actually do something that I totally shouldn't uh, for a live demo, which is attempt to do it like over the internet. But I really want to show off uh, Simply Test Me. Uh, on this website, you can go enter like any Drupal module or Drupal theme or Drupal distribution, and it will launch a new install of it that you can use for 30 minutes. So you can go test anything out really, really fast without having to install it. And it's really great if you're a contributor working in the issue queue, because you can launch this module with this patch and then test it and see if it works. So we're going to use Simply Test Me to launch a new instance of Panoply 1.1. And if this fails terribly, I have a one on my local computer too. <laughs> Oh, 
or if it takes too long. I guess that's the other the other thing that can go wrong. While we're waiting, <coughs> does anyone have any any questions right away? I should have said at the front, like if you have questions, just ask me. I don't have a question. <coughs> when you have custom pages mm -hmm. in search API, can it search those that page content, not panes? No. Um, at least not the way we have it set up by default in Monopoly. So search API is specific, <coughs> like you make a new index for each thing you want to search. So by default, we set up an index for users and an index for nodes. Uh, it's probably possible to create an oh, index so you for- create a new index that could be just- fun. Yeah. Because I saw there is a module that exposes it, but I don't oh, know sweet. if it was exposed automatically. Mm -hmm. So that's where, because we just, for site today, that's pure pattern space. Yeah. So we don't do that in Panoply. It's probably possible. I mean, everything's possible yeah. in Drupal. Uh, but um, you know, you really shouldn't be using like landing pages for content, and you really only want people to search for content, right? Mm -hmm. Like you don't want the home page to come up as a result. Like that never makes sense. Yeah. Um, and if your clients, your users are like abusing all of this Panoply jazz to like create real content, you need to sit down with them and say like, maybe we should create a content type for what you're trying to do. But any other questions? When you hook up Simply Test Me like you're doing, can other people then check that same installation? Yeah, you get like a crazy URL yeah. uh, with a whole bunch of numbers characters and numbers and stuff in it. Yeah, you can pass it to other people and for right, the 30 so minutes that you have it. Right, so other people could be testing your patch in a lifetime. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's, That's very cool. Yeah, it's super useful for any kind of development or testing or anything because, uh, you know, <coughs> just setting up my computer to have another environment to go test a thing. This might not turn out to be a good idea. <coughs> this, is this is taking a, a while. Maybe I should have started well, then the time would have ran down. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, ooh, oh, final oh, polish. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 Another question. Are there any issues with using Panoply um, with multi-site? No, uh, I use multi-site for everything. Uh, all of my clients I do hosting uh, are on Ager, which is all based on multi-site. Most all the sites through there. Okay. Yeah, are you doing like a thing where you have uh, several similar sites and they're on one multi-site? Well, at, at the moment, I'm not, and I'd like to do that. Uh, there's a lot of really good reasons to do multi-site. It, it creates more work for you, and there's like some rules you have to follow to not accidentally crash all your sites. Uh, but you know, if you if you do that correctly and the overhead isn't too much for you, like it's lots of really good reasons to do multi-site. Uh, so this is the Panoply installer. Looks super similar to the normal Drupal installer. Uh, Simply test me fills out all this stuff for us. So we don't have to bother about it. No. Again, uh, like Justin was saying, it includes 92 modules by default, uh, which is quite a few. But they're all really like low-level stuff, like improving the uh, module page. You know, adding a search there. Um, you know adding the entity API uh, token module. So um, it really won't weigh you down that much. There's uh, some child distributions built on Panoply that kind of take it to an even greater extreme. I think Open Atrium has like 200 modules and uh, you need to have a, a slightly better server to run Open Atrium. <laughs> oh yeah, Sim maybe simply test me was a good idea. <laughs> yeah, so all the normal stuff. So for those of you who never saw a Drupal install, this is the Drupal installer. Normally I'd be setting my password and uh, whatnot. Uh, we're about to come up to a couple of unique uh, Panoply things. Um, normally you just get to the end of the installer and then you have to start adding modules. Uh, this is a mo from a module called Apps. We're able to uh, offer the user a menu of other things they could install that actually aren't included in Panoply. Uh, we're going to install the demo data and when we tell it to do that, it's going to actually download that module and all of its dependencies from the internet. Um, so you could you know, provide your customers, your clients, your distribution users with like a menu of 20 different things, 
uh, that they could add to their site. Uh, but if they don't use them, it does nothing, right? It doesn't download anything, nothing happens. So we're going to include the demo data so we have some stuff to play with. Yeah, and if you're making your own custom distribution, you can also choose to uh, not do apps at all. Like that menu doesn't have to happen if you don't want it, just like this one. Uh, Panoply also adds this starting theme chooser. Uh, if your distribution doesn't want to do that uh, and just wants to have one theme that's always enabled, that's also possible. We're going to choose uh, responsive Bartik. The default Drupal theme is uh, Bartik, but it doesn't work on mobile phones, really. Uh, responsive Bartik is actually Bartik as it's going to be in Drupal 8, which is totally responsive, has a tablet version, has a mobile version, and this is a backport to Drupal 7. I have to remember to show uh, resizing the window and show some of the responsive stuff. Oh, and it totally it's already responding because this projector screen is super tiny. <laughs> <laughs> this is the tablet version. <laughs> um, all right, so this is Panoply 1.1. Normally, these look like you know little menu guys and not like uh, big finger buttons, uh, but just forgive that for now. Um, so all this demo content, too, it was installed by that Panoply demo module. Uh, if you uninstall that afterwards, it would remove all this content and totally clean, uh, clean everything up. So there's really no problem to uh, enable it in the beginning. Um, the first thing I'm going to show is the IPE, which I've been talking about like crazy. It's activated by pressing one of these two buttons. For example, change this layout. Uh, now let's say we want to put the sidebar on the other side. Click that. Yeah, sure. That looks good. And now, the sidebar's on the left. Page didn't even reload. Wow. That's insane. We can click uh, customize this page. We can grab any of these things, drag it over here. Uh, if we could see that. You may notice that the image got smaller. Um, Panoply has responsive images installed, so depending on the amount of free space available, it will scale the images to fit. Uh, and if you loaded it in that way on a mobile device, it would load a pre-scaled version. Add a video to the top. We'll grab one of my famous uh, Polish language videos. <laughs> so you just have to grab the link and uh, oh, we'll have to select the video. Post it in here. Don't need to bother about with embed code. It understands YouTube. Just put the link. And you'll see it appears right here in the live preview. Wow. On change the title, I can say, uh, me speaking Polish. <laughs> and the title appears right at the top, live preview. Uh, I want to say that path, uh, the link should actually be a link to Google. Uh, click away, live preview will update. It's already linked to Google. Huh. Uh, Save it. There's my video right on the page. Uh, if I click save, it is now permanent, and that's what my front page looks like. <laughs> that's insane. Uh, so this is a landing page, um, because it's you know a unique page with no uh, you know central content. If you're doing this instead on a content page like a node, uh, when you would save it, it would ask, do you want to save this for all nodes of this type, or just for this one particular node? And both of those are useful, right? Like if you want to change it across the whole site, that's sort of a normal Drupal thing. Um, normally in Drupal, you can't really easily do a one-off thing, like just this page, just this node, I want to have this image here, but clients always ask for that, like at least once or twice. It's inevitable. Uh, so you know, it has support for that built in. Um, we'll go back to the IPE. There's also this super useful style button. Looks like a paintbrush. And it will give us a bunch of options for styles we can choose. Those are style plugins. Uh, these are the defaults, I think, provided by the Panoply demo module. Uh, I can say dark blue background. Um, but you, uh, if you're creating a site for a client, can put that in a custom module, a set of styles for them. You can put it in your theme. Um, and you can give them a set of uh, styles for these different panes that fit in with the design of the website. 
Um, so they get some freedom to change things, but not the ability to like make this one orange while the rest of the site's in a blue theme or you know crazy adjust the margins. You give them like a palette of things that they can do safely. We'll make this this wacky light blue background. So next we're going to look at uh, the content creation page, the improvements there. Uh, this toolbar, by the way, uh, is a module called Navbar. It's a backport of the toolbar in Drupal 8. So, uh, you know, may as well get started using it now since this is what the toolbar will look like on all Drupal sites come Drupal 8. Yeah, since this is just the default uh, Panoply install, we only have um, the two options uh, for a content page or a landing page. On your distribution or your site built out for your client, of course, you'd have things specific to their site, specific to their use case. Uh, so how much yeah. would get done using the regular Drupal interface? For example, adding a new content type. Mm -hmm. Does that look like it always looks in Drupal for adding a new content type? No. Nope. Does that look like Panoply? Uh, we, we customized it out into this uh, two-column guy wow. um, rather than the normal thing, which is like everything up at the top and then a whole bunch of vertical tabs down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So we pulled out the useful things that you actually want to work on over into this right side bar and hid a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, like you don't see the menu options until you click provide a menu link. Otherwise it's totally hidden. Same for the revision stuff. Uh, the published checkbox, with no, which no client on earth ever understands, uh, is replaced by this publish or save as draft button. The checkbox is just gone. Um, yeah, and the, there's like the sticky at top of lists checkbox, which uh, only does something if you don't customize the default front page. Everyone customizes the default front page, so now your clients are stuck with this checkbox with a cryptic name that does nothing. Mm. So we've just removed it, it's gone. Um, and a whole bunch of stuff like that. So probably the most interesting thing on the content creation page is the WYSIWYG. I'll just show out some of the uh, fancier features, um, like media. Uh, the media, media module is pretty cool. Uh, there's extensions to insert all sorts of things that you wouldn't traditionally think of as media. Uh, we have it set up just for images and YouTube and Vimeo videos. And I always use uh, what? No, data. Okay. I always use giant pictures of myself for my demo images. It's not a New York thing. <laughs> I created a couple of default uh, image styles that are uh, not very specific, quarter size thumbnail, um, but since the images are also responsive, you don't want to get too specific. They'll change size to fit the device that it appears on. There we go. And uh, we can put a caption on it. How are you going to do the caption? It's two modules. It's like some <coughs> caption thing and then like caption filter. I don't remember exactly. It's a pain to set up. <laughs> and hopefully WYSIWYG does it for you. Um, that didn't quite work. It's too small of an image. Anyway, uh, once the caption is there, you can edit it like any other WYSIWYG. I think I could even WYSIWYG the things in the caption. Yeah, make like bold italics. There's some caption modules for Drupal that don't let you do that, it's just plain text. Um, we have the image resize filter that should have gotten bigger rather than smaller. Well, there's a bug going on there, the risk of line demos. Um, but you resize the image in the WYSIWYG, it doesn't just change the height and width on that image tag. Uh, when it's served to the client, it will actually generate a new image at that size on the server, so you're not wasting any bandwidth. Um, you know, we hide uh, the more advanced WYSIWYG options here, so the client isn't overwhelmed with the stuff that we provide them. Uh, the Linkit module is pretty cool. So I can just say, I'm going to start typing some 
uh, words that I know are on the site. There's a whole bunch of stuff about vegetables in the demo data. Like, bam, there's a link to it. Um, link it's actually really flexible to, um, we'll go get some vegetables to come back up. Uh, what appears here is totally customizable. If you have a lot of different types of content, you can have this also say like, great vegetables content page, or you know, uh, you can include different information from the uh, modules in there anyway. It allows you to create a really cool experience geared towards your specific use case for your clients. Or users, or yourself, you know what I'm like. Um, yeah, let's do a landing page since we haven't done one. So yeah, this is how you would create those unique, troublesome pages on your site, like the home page. Say it goes at home. So it starts out, there's nothing there, let's give it a layout. Everyone likes sidebars. I'll just look at some of the um, other built-in widgets that Panoply provides. It's all really basic stuff, nothing too specific or geared to any particular use case. Um, let's say you or your users just want to drop a bunch of links in the sidebar. This window's too small to see the live preview and see everything else at once, but it's like my page. And all of these widgets are actually uh, fieldable panel panes, which means that they're entities with fields, uh, which means that you can create new widgets for your users that are specific to them just in the Drupal interface, creating a new entity, throwing some fields on it. This is just, this is actually like the, the node edit form for this particular entity. throw a spotlight on there. Spotlight is um, what some people call a slider, like those things you see at the top of web pages where it shows like three images uh, every couple of seconds. Kind of going out of fashion now, but there was a time when you couldn't make a website without one. So you won't be able to really see this because the window is so small. Um, normally, the previews to the right of everything uh, but because everything's so small, it's not. Come on, live preview, update. Huh. Oh, I have to click upload. There we go. Usability. That's what I'm talking about. When the internet updates it, our uh, spotlight's already appearing in this little tiny window. So we get, we get to see a lot of responsiveness in action. Uh, if your user actually had a window that was this big, oh, did I forget to click upload? No, I did. So if they actually had a screen this big, that's how Panoply would attempt to realize your, uh, your spotlight. And there you go, you have something that kind of looks like a, like a front page, a really crappy front page. Uh, but you know, we didn't have to do any, anything on the back end. We just jumped in there and started creating things. Um, you know, and not dealing with blocks or regions or uh, menus like normally I guess you do links with the Drupal menu. Uh, we just did it with things that anyone would understand. Add links, add spotlight, add image. 
so that's, I think, everything I had to show in the live demo, uh, at least pre-planned. Uh, is there anything anyone would like to see? Anything you'd like me to bring up? Sweet. Let's move on. Is that a bunch of music equipment you got back there? Yes, it is. Yeah, that's what I was, I was like trying to look at. Yeah. With, with the hair <laughs> also came uh, uh, some, some, <laughs> some music. Okay, so we're going to touch on a little bit uh, the more advanced um, use case of actually creating a distribution of your own. And we're just going to do like the real quick basics because I know this isn't a super technical audience. Um, yeah, building a Drupal distribution is hard. Uh, no reason to reinvent the wheel. That guy already did it. Um, <laughs> When you're building a distribution uh, on Panoply, uh, this is what the stack below you is going to look like. You know, you have standard Drupal. Uh, most of the power of everything in Panoply and in Drupal comes from the contrib modules. And then you have Panoply on top, sort of organizing that, setting up some really reasonable defaults. And then all of your work goes at the absolute top level. So you don't have to worry about messing around with the plumbing. You leave that up to uh, lower parts of the stack. Oh. Uh, here are some existing distributions already built on uh, Panoply. Open Atrium is probably the biggest one right now. Uh, Company Internet, we talked about it earlier. Open Academy for universities, we also talked about that earlier. The demo framework one, like, really gets me. So, this is what Acquia uses to make sales. They do, like, multi-million dollar projects, and they're going in there with Panoply uh, in order to win people over to Drupal. Uh, there's a couple of niche ones. Uh, restaurant for restaurant websites. MVP creator, this one's mine, uh, for making uh, startup uh, uh, web application MVPs. Push tape uh, for musician websites. And the web experience toolkit, which is a really interesting example. I've never actually used it, but the uh, Drupal distribution that the Canadian government uses for all of their uh, websites is based on Panoply. I have no idea if it's useful for people who are not the Canadian government, but it's really <laughs> cool that they put it on Drupal.org uh, and open sourced it. So even if it's not useful, it's an example of a custom internal uh, distribution. So if you wanted to make one of your own, you can go and look and see what they did. So, uh, a community contributor to Panoply made this really cool tool uh, using Drush. Who here knows what Drush is? Okay, that's way technical uh, <laughs> on the technical end, but the short version is it's a, a tool that allows you to work with Drupal from the command line. So you type commands to it, Drush runs off and does something. Uh, this uh, Drush extension, Panoply Based Distribution Starter Kit, uh, allows you to quickly create your own distribution based on Panoply. So it, literally comes down to like four commands. Uh, you type this to download that extension. Uh, you type this one to create a new distribution called MyDistro, the machine name MyDistro. Uh, go to it, type this drush make command, and at this directory will appear a Drupal uh, installation, a Drupal, uh, a whole package of Drupal that you could install straight away that is your distribution. And then you just jump in there and start changing your make file and uh, some other stuff to make it really your own. Um, if you didn't want to use that Drush uh, tool for some reason, there's a couple of bugs in it right now, so maybe you wouldn't necessarily get to the end of it. I, I was making issues in his issue queue last night. <laughs> and I was going through like, does my slide actually execute? Okay. But um, we also have some really great documentation on Drupal.org for uh, how to do all the steps by hand and also uh, documentation on uh, best practices for creating your distribution, uh, for doing demo data, a whole bunch of really cool stuff. So uh, yeah, in the end, uh, it'll guide you to create these three files with you know, contents that it leads you through. Uh, the next step is adding a custom theme. Really, most distributions come with just like one theme that is the theme for that distribution. Um, you can set it up. Next time it installs, you won't see Bartik, you'll see your custom theme. Uh, and start adding your custom functionality to the Drush make file um, and really make it your own. And then run Drush make to build it. So kind of breeze through that, didn't want to get too technical. Uh, if anyone's uh, actually interested in creating a custom distribution, like come jam with me, I can hook you up with all the information and you know, we can correspond and figure it out. 
Uh, before I close out, I just want to make a shout out to the other co-maintainers on the Panoply project. Um, so this isn't like all my work. Uh, the lead maintainer on Panoply is Matt Cheney. Uh, he is one of the founders of Pantheon, uh, which is a Drupal hosting company, doing really exciting stuff these days. Uh, Tom Kirkpatrick uh, works for a uh, Drupal agency out in the UK and also one of the contributors to Open Academy. That's how he came into Panoply uh, from Open Academy. We also have a really uh, awesome, vibrant community. Uh, the maintainers, like us three guys, we're not like creating this up like wizardry in a dark room somewhere. Like really what we do is we review uh, patches and things that the community makes and get it committed into the uh, upstream project. You know, a lot of the work is actually done by, you know, dozens or hundreds of people who are just contributing things to the issue queue. Um, so I wanted to thank them quickly. And Matt Cheney again, who I stole most of the slides in this presentation from, with his permission. So, any more questions? I have a question about Panelizer. Because yes. I've never really only used it once. Like, <clears throat> do you have any tips for setting up and using Panelizer? Uh, I guess, you know, use it for only the thing you need it for. Because you could panelize like everything, yeah. but then it'll just get out of control. So, um, I guess for people who don't know, uh, in panels normally, all you do is replace pages with uh, a thing created by panels. Panelizer allows you to replace the output of individual pieces of content with panels. So like you can say, I have this content type, and every time it appears on my site, whether in a list or like as its own page, I'm gonna replace it with this custom panels thing. Um, yeah, it's super useful, but like don't overuse it. Yeah, because I think that's the one step I took is site, I was like, ooh, pages, well, I'll use panels so that way they can easily edit and not have to worry about clicking the edit button to edit a page. Mm -hmm. But then that's when the search API hit. And I was like, should have used nodes, like analyzer versus pages. Right, right. So that's why I didn't know the next step now. Yeah, and I, I kind of like alternate too between Am I going to use Panelizer to replace the full page of that node, or am I going to use it to replace the display mode, uh, like the full display mode? And I rarely ever do both at the same time, because that's just craziness, right? Yeah. Any other questions? I'm thinking. I'm trying to What did you guys think of the presentation? Well, I was trying really hard to make it accessible to people even who have never used Drupal. Did I succeed, maybe? I thought it was excellent. Yeah, this is really cool. <coughs> I've been doing Drupal for a while, and I found it really confusing. And I'm getting better at it now, and I'm comfortable with it. If I would have started here, it would have been really different. I mean, because everything that you said, I, I mean, it's a hell of a lot simpler mm -hmm. than Drupal is. Um, and I, looking at it now, I'm seeing where those things come from. Um, and I don't know. I, I mean, it would be interesting to see what people who have not had much experience with Drupal and who start with Panopoly think of the whole Drupal experience. It makes Drupal much simpler, but it also takes away some of the potential and power and functionality yeah. that Drupal offers. Yeah, it hides a whole bunch of it under the, you know, under this. Yeah, and it, like the idea is that get them started doing something and be invested in their site and then go learn all the complicated stuff as opposed to turning up and being like, what is this blue screen? Yeah, right. How do I proceed? Um, but I don't actually know about that in practice, right? Like I've never you know, <laughs> actually tested it, taken a person in both situations right. and watched their progress. Uh, one other thing I was gonna say too, when you were uh, saying like it makes it easier than, than Drupal is, uh, a lot of the stuff that's in Panoply is gonna be in Drupal 8. Not all of it, uh, we're not gonna you know, re reach Nirvana in, in Drupal 8, but uh, tons of it will be, and I'm hoping that you know, as time goes on, it won't just be you know, niche distributions like Panoply, the ones based on it that have these features, but that Drupal 8.5 or Drupal 9 or whatever will have all this stuff out of the box. That would be exciting. Yes. <laughs> Drupal 8 admin menu, I heard about a Drupal 8 stop. You said the one that's in Panopoly yeah. is the same one that's in Drupal 8. You use admin menu, right? 
I use navbar uh, or admin, which I like better than admin menu. But now for everything, I use navbar because I know it's what's going to be in Drupal 8. So do you think it's more uh, efficient than like using like admin menu or just the out of the box Drupal 7? Mm -hmm. Well, the out of the box Drupal 7 one is, is terribly yeah. efficient. Yeah. Um, I, I would say the admin menu is probably more efficient because you like never have to click, right? You just hover over everything. Well, yeah, um, it's all well, it's on drop down. Yeah, yeah, but that also kind of makes me crazy because if I go like four <laughs> menus deep and then I move the mouse like slightly off and then it all disappears, it's like ah. Oh. Um, so navbar is probably less efficient but less prone to error. But the biggest difference is that admin menu fails on mobile. Uh, and navbar is totally mobile friendly. It was designed mobile from the ground up. Navbar is even actually uh, very accessible uh, for you know blind people who have to use assistive devices to use the computer. Uh, whereas admin menu is like the definition of not accessible. Everything is a hover, and like hover event is the one thing that anyone with an assistive device cannot do. Um, so yeah, uh, it's it's what I use for everything now. Sweet. That was going to ask right now. You, you just got into this and toyed around with it like two oh, weeks ago. What do you think if like, you hit the ground running with like Monopoly? Or I thought that was easier. Just looking at, because like I'm, I have everything written down in like a notebook and stuff like that because my laptop's going crazy, but besides the point. Uh, and that looked a thousand times easier than what I was trying to do with just anything, just create whatever it is, and mm -hmm. from there it looked like that would have been much easier if I had started there versus where I did actually start. Sweet, sweet. It's good to hear. Because there's a lot of things in there that, that are just like, how did you figure out how to just tweak it just enough to be usable? And like that's also that's also not saying uh, that there aren't bugs in Panoply and like problems and stuff. But the advantage of using someone else's configuration is if it doesn't work, it's a bug. Mm -hmm. You know, go file that in the issue queue, and a whole group of people who are invested in this thing will work on fixing it, and then we'll fix it for everyone. Yeah. So, like, I was having some interesting issues with uh, imagery size there or whatever. You know, uh, if that was on just your site where you had made all that configuration yourself and you're trying to get it just for that one site, like, that's totally your problem. You know, <laughs> and maybe it's not worth it. Maybe you know the client isn't paying you enough for WYSIWYG for you to solve that weird imagery size bug. Uh, but you know, collaborating with the community, we can progressively get closer and closer. Cool. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.